My name is Dr. Neerat Saxena and I welcome you to the course Transportation Engineering. In this video, I'll be presenting a case study which is converting an unsignalized intersection into a signalized intersection. So the intersection under consideration that we have for this particular case study is shown on this slide. And there are several pieces of information that we also have available uh, for this case study. So as we can see from this diagram, it is a one lane, two way unsignalized intersection, which is located on a flat terrain with good visibility conditions around this location. This unsignalized intersection only allows straight or through movement of traffic, which means that no left or right turn is allowed at this intersection. We also know that this intersection is heavily used by light vehicles or cars, which means that there is zero movement of heavy vehicles or truck at this unsignalized intersection location. The traffic flow on the minor road, which is the vertical road of this intersection or the north-south direction. Uh, we, we know that the traffic flow on the north-south direction is pretty similar to the traffic flow that exists on the major stream, which is given by the horizontal road in this diagram. Let's call it as the east-west direction. So, in other words, the traffic flow in the north-south direction is pretty similar to the traffic flow that exists on the east-west direction. So the aim of this case study is to install a traffic signal at this intersection, which would lead to reduced delays on the minor road as well as the overall intersection. Um, in the current situation, uh, the, this red car on this diagram on the minor road has to wait and give way to the blue car which is traveling on the major stream which leads to increased delays on the vehicles on the minor stream thus installing a traffic signal will lead to reduction in the delays experienced by the vehicles on the minor stream so the very first step that was undertaken uh, for this case study was determining the traffic flows on each of the four approaches for this unsignalized intersection. There are several methods of uh, evaluating the traffic flows at a given approach. Pneumatic tubes is one of them. So using such methods, we found out the hourly traffic flows on each of the four approaches that are coming towards this unsignalized intersection. Now, the objective is to determine the phase plans and signal timings for the given traffic flows. Uh, when I say signal phase plans and timings, what I am referring is that what is the duration of the green and red times to be uh, implemented on the traffic signal to ensure smooth movement of traffic at this unsignalized intersection location. And this process is also known as signal design. Let us make an assumption that it is proposed to install a fixed time controller at this site. There could have been other option which is actuated signal that could have been placed instead. An actuated signal is where the duration of green and red times fluctuates depending on the traffic flow that exists at a given time of the day. But for now, let's go ahead with the fixed time controller. Now, signal design in this particular case study has been based on the guidelines given in OSROADS. And there are three manuals that um, uh, detail the processes involved in signal design. Those are Guide to Traffic Management Part 3, which mainly looks at capacity analysis. We have Part 6 for functional layout, road space allocation, etc. Lastly, we have Part 9 for signal timing coordination, etc. The very first thing as part of signal design is to propose a phase plan, where a phase plan means um, simultaneous movement of traffic that can take place at an intersection. So for the given intersection that we have at hand, we propose a two-phase plan for this particular site, where phase one 
is the east-west movement of traffic and phase two is the simultaneous movement of the north-south traffic. It's also worth mentioning that um, the number of phases can be even greater than two depending on the complexity of the intersection. The next definition um, is the critical movement, which is defined as the greatest or the major traffic movement that takes place in each phase. So in this last slide, we uh, proposed a two phase plan where we see that the movement of 800 and 500 vehicles, which takes place in phase one. And similarly, we see that uh, for the given intersection, the movement of 600 and 400 vehicles, which takes place in phase two. Now, critical movement is the greater traffic movement in each fee in each, each phase, which is 800 in phase one and 600 vehicles per hour in phase two. So these two movements are called the critical movements for each of the two phases. The next definition is the saturation flow, which is defined as the maximum rate of flow that can pass through a given traffic movement under the prevailing roadway and traffic conditions usually expressed as vehicles per hour. Another way to put saturation flow is the number of vehicles that can pass through the intersection from an approach if the green signal of the intersection is left turned on for a period of one hour. So Ausroad has given guidelines for setting the base saturation value, which is um, for our given case, since it's a flat terrain intersection with good visibility conditions and only has one through lane, the saturation flow is 1,850 vehicles per hour as given by Ausroads. The next definition is the start time loss, which is the difference between the start and end lag times and is equal to the intergreen time plus the difference between the start loss and the end gain. This definition can be better understood with the help of the diagram on this slide. And this diagram shows the phase diagram, which is the duration of red, green, and amber time, and the several definitions associated with such phase plans. The start loss can be uh, seen as highlighted in this diagram, and it is intergreen time plus the difference between start lag and the end game. End game. So the normal start time loss value as recommended by Ausroad is three seconds, which will be taken in this case study. The next step is the signal design, which is based on several criteria and the most frequently used criteria is the intersection degree of free, uh, saturation, which is uh, where saturation is the level of occupancy that is designed um, for a particular intersection. So the intersection degree of saturation formula is shown on this slide. And uh, X, which is the intersection degree of saturation, is recommended as 0.9 by Ausroad, which is we design the signal timings assuming a degree of saturation of 90%. The other criteria uh, include minimizing delay, the number of stops, and queue length. So using the previous formula um, and reshuffling it, we can find the value of C, which is the actual cycle time of a signal. Um, we, see, we can find that C comes out to be 38.5. And when rounded up to the nearest five seconds, it, we, can, um, we propose a cycle time of 40 seconds for this particular intersection. Now the next step is to calculate the effective green time and an effective green time is the duration um, of green signal in which the actual movement of vehicles takes place. And using the formula, we can find out the green, the effective green time for phase one and phase two are 20 seconds and 15 seconds respectively. The next step is to calculate the displayed green time, which is the duration for which the green signal is actually turned on. So it's a total duration for which the green signal is turned on. And it's given by the expression that is effective green time minus amber time, which is defined as three seconds as per Ausroad guidelines plus the start loss time. 
So using this expression, we can see that the displayed green time for phase one and phase two is 20 seconds and 15 seconds respectively. Thus, we are able to calculate the new cycle time, which is summation of the both displayed green times plus amber time for each of the phases. We, when added up together, gives us a new cycle time of 41 seconds, which is slightly different from what we had uh, initially, that was 40 seconds. The figure below shows the phase timings for each of the phases, where these numbers, 23, 18, for example, are the timings in seconds. Since our cycle time is now different to 40 seconds, thus uh, we calculate uh, the degree of saturation again, and the recalculated degree of saturation value comes out to be 0 0.88, which is 88%. And since this value is less than what we had originally designed for, this design is um, considered as a satisfactory design. Summing up, uh, the following slide shows the list of manuals that have been um, referred in this particular case study. And these manuals are easily available on Google. With this, I would like to end this video. If you have any questions, feel free to email those to me and thank you.